chapter thirty four of lady jim of curzon street this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org lady jim of curzon street by fergus hume chapter thirty four were a purblind generation convinced of the invaluable blessings of sorrow trouble will be robbed of its sting ignorance and fear make the unenlightened bemoan their burdens or shirk bearing them as they should be borne with the strength of hope chastening is the gift of the eternal love and those happy few who know this submit with joy to the improving rod but worrying is not submission nor is grumbling a recognition of curative effects to be manful to be daring to be so entirely wise from the learning of the lesson as to extract the sweet from the bitter thus do we prove ourselves worthy of that suffering which god bestows in mercy and in pity troubles if rightly understood deepen the most shallow character purify the most soiled soul they begin in woe but they end in joy when the lesson is learned then comes the holiday or more precisely the holy day of peace and gladness jim in his simple way understood that out of apparent evil great good had come to himself and leah never before had they understood each other so well never before had they foregathered with less friction the duke's reformation was as genuine as his embryonic soul was capable of making it he felt desperately ashamed of himself at the communion table and shame of self provided the physical ego be not considered is the beginning of repentance which leads to hope which brings pardon and solace to the uneasy sinful heart jim did not become a saint by any manner of means but he tried by fits and starts to be a better man and so with true though faltering zeal advanced towards the light and it was much gained that so once self-satisfied a man should acknowledge himself to be at all in need of improvement the recalled code of schoolboy honour helped him to amend the less drastic rules of the society man could jim have only gone still farther back and remembered helpful nursery prayers and childish faith he might have seen even more clearly how to utilise his mistakes but he was yet a spirit in embryo and his receptive powers were not great leah did not keep pace with her husband on the upward path when the danger was brought to naught and her nerves became more normal she forgot everything with the alacrity of a hardened heart the wind of the spirit had but troubled the surface of her nature its depths remained undisturbed within a fortnight her dear devil of egotism returned and she tore out of her book of life the disagreeable page which she declined to read for the second time certainly she retained so much grace and memory as not to laugh at jim's efforts to be good and she was less ready than of yore to see and comment upon his obvious failings but she secretly wondered that he should try to be pious when there was no worldly advantage to be gained by such dullness besides jim with the zeal of the newly converted began to preach in a stammering shamefaced way about the duties they owed to themselves in particular and to society at large he even looked up noblesse oblige at the tail end of the dictionary and quoted the platitude to leah on that occasion she had laughed consumedly but truth to say jim's sermons bored her immensely she preferred those of lionel who as a professional guide to glory knew his business whereas poor dear jim was hopelessly muddled therefore while the duke laboriously tried to be good and succeeded but doubtfully leah was coquetting deliriously with the world the flesh and the many agreeable devils of her acquaintance she improved her former extravagances into something worse and revenged herself for being agreeable to jim by letting both friends and enemies have the full benefit of her witty cruel tongue 
the few who did not come under its lash were in ecstasies at her sparkling conversation and the many who did made themselves pronouncedly pleasant out of mortal fear leah danced and sang through the season with the insolent glee of a woman who knows her position to be unassailable jim wondered at her short memory and tried to refresh it but that she would not endure and declined even to hear the name of demetrius moreover as m aksakoff had been translated to copenhagen there was no need to smooth matters over between him and the duke everything was safe everything was ripping and she felt that her latest pas de soeur was being executed on firm ground she had skipped in the very nick of time from that dangerous old mount which had erupted so feebly and no one could say but what she did her best to be amiable late in the season she met and congratulated mr and mrs askew she told lady richardson how she admired her courage underlined in marrying that handsome pauper captain lake and forgivingly did she condole with mrs penworthy when the unexpected death of freddy from overwork left that evergreen hack a widow whom no admirer wished to marry lady canvey was most tenderly considered and wallace the globe-trotting cynic on leah's introduction amused the stay-at-home old lady by special command the sedate hengists thought even more of the duchess than they had done of lady jim and she was often asked to bore herself in their protective company she gave sir billy richardson a smiling time at one of the ducal seats and invited joan kames to curzon street for a week of shopping and frivolity also bazaars and charity concerts and meetings about the unemployed aristocracy took up her attention the fashionable congregation of an exclusive church beheld her regularly in its midst and heard the audible admission that she was a miserable sinner a most touching confession for a truly good duchess to make then she befriended a bishop who was not too straight-laced and induced him to preach a scientific sermon in lionel's church of which lionel very nastily did not approve oh it was a merry time when the grapes were ripe and the first fruits of her ducal harvest were being gathered in the duchess of pentland won golden opinions even from the censorious things could not have been better managed by the discarded fetish and leah admitted that in this respectable orgy the birthday of her life had come during this meteoric career it surprised every one that she should choose to retire suddenly fashion clamoured her at her closed doors society journals wondered and lamented individual friends expressed themselves puzzled and in print and conversation the freak of a duchess who chose to disappear was freely discussed it was as though the noonday sun should set unexpectedly leah's radiant orb had blazed triumphantly for a few months paling the lesser stars of society and then had vanished the duke when applied to for an explanation stated that she had gone abroad because her health was hum 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 she crossed the channel alone too which looked odd people began to talk and to invent reasons to explain the inexplicable but not even the most daring hinted at a connubial disagreement jim would have stopped any such rumour at once with high words not that it could arise seeing that he thanked god publicly every sunday for possessing a wife whose price was far above rubies but whatever had happened whatever might be the reason it was indisputable that the beautiful and wealthy and clever and popular duchess of pentland had retired from the world in her heyday of social success lionel was the first to hear of her when she returned unexpectedly to firmingham after a month's sojourn on the continent one day in the chilly grey autumn weather he received a note asking him to call at four o'clock and went unthinkingly to pass through what he afterwards remembered as the most painful hour of his life he fancied when setting out that leah merely wished to see him about the duke it might be that jim with the old adam levin still working within had broken out again and that lionel was summoned to call the sinner a second time to repentance but the duke as he gathered from old collie was vegetating at hengis castle it was impossible that the old adam could emerge from his penitential cell in so respectable and moral a neighbourhood leah received her cousin in the sitting-room of her lady jim days where they had twice talked seriously later on it appeared that she had a special reason for selecting an apartment sanctified by the vicar's endeavour to improve her into a moderately presentable angel it was a charming and tastefully decorated room and the duchess was as tastefully decorated and as charming as her surroundings 
she sat in a deep chair by a brisk fire dressed with that perfect choice of colour and material which always distinguished her the delicate blue of her frock and a selection of certain filigree silver ornaments matched marvellously with her splendid red hair and sapphire eyes lionel noted an unusual pallor but thought that he had never seen her look more lovely apparently she had been reading for she dropped her handkerchief over an open book on the small table at her elbow when she rose to shake hands he mechanically wondered at the trivial action and learned its significance later so very kind of you to come lionel said the duchess pressing his hand cordially i know how busy you are with your parishioners you are one of them smiled the clergyman at odd moments certainly but we globe trot for our places of worship nowadays sit down she indicated a convenient chair opposite her own now tell me the news of your small world is joan quite well could not be better considering the circumstances i am so glad when do you expect the happy event in a month please god leah looked pensively into the fire i hope it will be a boy i shall be more than content with a girl why a boy particularly why not when an heir is so important you succeed jim and a new marquis of frith my dear duchess you and the duke are young there is little chance of my succeeding i may be congratulating you some day no cried leah almost fiercely such a thing can never be thank god lionel stared why thank god oh uh, i hardly know of course i should hate to be pestered with children the nursery is an obsolete institution here and will remain so unless she hesitated unless jim marries again duchess why not leah if it will please you but why talk of jim's marrying again when you are in the best of health and spirits she shrugged indifferently one never knows i might go first i sincerely trust not does that imply that you wish me to be a real widow after posing as a sham one of course not but you talk so strangely and so honestly remember i have always paid you the compliment of being plain even to rudeness lionel tried to read her face but in vain and could not arrive at the meaning of her apparently aimless conversation the slanting rays of sunset made a radiant glory round her as she half sat half reclined in the chair and her beauty could bear even that merciless test youth health money charm loveliness with these desirable blessings at her command what else could she want i do not quite understand said the perplexed man understand what she asked absently then became more alive to his question oh my chatter you will before we part i am no sphinx to propose riddles every woman is a sphinx without a secret that is why you men find us so difficult to comprehend i confess to the difficulty at this moment what a complex mind i must have yet i am a very ordinary butterfly of fashion something with wings at all events though not entirely an angel her visitor laughed am i to pay your compliment or rebuke you for frivolity you can do both or either the sweet first will counterbalance the bitter last but i sicken of compliments even when genuine they never are men say things they don't mean to women out of traditional reverence for the exploded idea of the weaker vessel when you meet a child your first thought is to give it sweets when you talk with us the same thought is translated into polite lies and we never believe you never leah assured him plain or beautiful vain or humble we price the words directly in no case have i found them to be of value you make us out to be fools one must be truthful at times of course i always accept you lionel as you are more man than parson cannot i be both oh yes when miracles occur lately i heard of a parson who laboured solitary and freezing amongst the snows of labrador for a poor eighty pounds a year he was emphatically a man and a parson supplemented the vicar so you see miracles do occur a warm colour crept into leah's cheeks and she looked piercingly at her companion do they nowadays i mean i am not using a mere phrase believe me honestly now could those gospel miracles occur in this twentieth century lionel mused and considered a careful reply our master was given the spirit without measure as a man because he was the son of the most high by that wisdom did he work his marvels but the apostles in his power also prevailed over the apparently natural showing signs and wonders to the glory of the risen lord and his father with faith he can do all things said the blessed jesus himself yes leah i reverently believe that with purity faith and a humble trust in the father by the merits of the son and by the power of the holy ghost miracles could take place to-day 
then why don't they she asked abruptly the vicar sighing dropped into the high-pitched sing-song of the pulpit a faithless and perverse generation a scientific generation you mean i don't believe i can't believe and i won't believe prove that power of your master you have faith you are good you no no you go too fast i assuredly try to be good but i am sadly wanting in many ways i have faith but how weak how faltering who am i to claim that the lord should select me to reveal his strength unto men i can work no miracle leah would to god that i could if only to convince you would to god that you could she echoed with something like a groan and the faint flush disappeared like the dying out of a hope why do you a sceptic ask about these things leah possessed by the spirit of the perverse laughed maliciously jim is trying to be good why should not i try also since a wife is bound to follow her husband according to st paul who by the way was a bachelor but her mood shifted jim has a tin-pot sort of faith which is better than nothing i have not and so like your unbelieving jews require a sign lionel became professionally interested descrying intimations of a changed heart i believe that you will yet find the kingdom he said hopefully don't you make any such mistake she retorted i have not yet set out to find it and never will unless i see some of those wonders about which you talk so glibly but believe me i do though not to the extent of bible magic you hypnotize yourself into crediting the impossible i wish you could hypnotize me oh i wish i wish i wish she ended passionately faith is not hypnotism argued lionel the word grated on his ear it is it is it is leah was vehement in her denial science can explain everything why do you come here to prate of miracles when you know in your own heart that such things never were and never can be they were and they can be and they will be while christ reigneth asserted the vicar firmly nothing is impossible to god then call upon him and work your marvel i am not worthy you are not able rather and she taunted him as did elijah the priests of baal their god kames wondered at her restless moods and wondered still more when she abruptly left the serious subject they were discussing and on her own initiative to talk most frivolously i have heard you preach went on this weathercock and i am no more to be persuaded than was agrippa you and your shadows she whiffed these away poof let us talk of real things and a toss of her head dismissed the spiritual for the purely temporal i had such a ripping time this season rattled on the nature set upon pomps and vanities leah leah how can you change so rapidly oh my good man i am a twirl mcgee woman ever seeking variety religious conversation is neither amusing nor convincing it's much more fun to talk of one's friends and abuse their failings i decline to join in said lionel dryly and feeling nonplussed because you have no sense of humour what a dull time of it joan must have poor child she does not complain he objected stiffly oh lord what is the use of complaining i never whimper about jim though his goodness is even duller than his badness i have tried george drunk i have tried george sober she was quoting an epigram of charles the second and there is nothing in george you are unnecessarily personal rebuke kames annoyed that's right tramp on your little corns and you howl he intimated that he desired to leave my time is valuable oh i know you are a millionaire of seconds and hours how disagreeable you are when i want to be amused you have just informed me that i am dull he reminded her pointedly so you are all honest men are dull why i don't know unless it is that honest in wit match as ill as beauty and brains now don't look at your watch again i have something to tell you that will make your clerical hair stand on end what could one do with such a whirlwind woman the vicar replaced his watch and shrugged resignedly she was what she had always been freakish and uncertain but on this occasion more so than usual an april lady whimsical and irresponsible decidedly rude and aggravatingly amusing but kames instinctively felt at the back of these volleying drifts of small talk lurked something serious which she feared to handle hoping that in time it might be manifested to his intelligence he waited patiently while leah scrambled on verbosely in her gabble of nothings you need a london month to pull you together dull country dull man dull man awful bore get a parish in the west end you'll have howling larks converting dives and jezebel of the drawing-room i do not look upon conversion as a lark i do especially with jim oh lord to think that he of all people should turn goody-goody you are pleased of course the sight of the lost black sheep trotting home 
to fodder to the fold is i really cannot listen to this talk said lionel rising quickly yes you can i'll shock you more before i've done kames resumed his feet blankly but your reason leah jumped up as her visitor sat down and addressed nothing in particular he asked for reason and from a woman she exclaimed so like that lame lord esbrook he always asks what he should not and what he is never likely to get reason from women and from men who have still less to spare but that's his way have you met lord esbrook such a funny walk as he has dot and carry one wooden leg you know dot and carry one just like this only much worse and leah limped the length of the room mimicking an extraordinary gait so cleverly that lionel laughed openly though you shouldn't mock at people's infirmities he coughed why not esbrook's a holy show and with the spite of the cripple he spares no one's feelings he's the cracked black pot snarling at the kettles he can never hope to be with his dot and carry one dot and carry one and back she came swinging and grunting with provoking cleverness in her gyrations it seemed from her imitations that lord esbrook gyrated she overturned the table upon which rested the covered book leah pounced to pick up the volume as did kames out of courtesy when he had set the table on its legs he could scarcely refrain from glancing casually at the book its exterior was familiar the bible exclaimed an amazed man leah flung herself into the chair laughing noisily oh what a face she mocked pointing a jeering finger look at yourself do were you reading the bible asked the vicar too astonished to note the poor attempt she made to force humour why not said she defiantly but with flushes and quick breaths you only mock the opportunity is so alluring was her reply there's such an awful lot of rot in that history of the jews and hundreds of impossibilities here she seized the bible and rapidly swept the pages what was i reading when you entered the thin leaves flew and flickered beneath her fingers oh yes something quite too absurd in matthew st matthew mr st matthew if you will there she presented the book you read so beautifully really you do without flattery i will not read for you to mock her face flashed into crude anger read she commanded harshly the vicar would have declined again but that his eye fell on the verses she had indicated a memory of their earlier conversation coupled with her unnecessary vehemence made him obey without further hesitation it might be that here was the key to the problem of her jerky speech his mellow voice rose like the music of a solemn bell and the glorious words rolled majestically through the room when he was come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him and behold there came a leper and worshipped him saying lord if thou wilt thou canst make me clean and jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying i will be thou clean and immediately his leprosy was cleansed and immediately his leprosy was cleansed breathed the duchess gripping the arms of her chair to lean forward why not her leprosy lionel laid down the sacred volume it was a man who came to ask mercy of our lord said he obtusely leah threw herself back in the chair with the pettish cry of a misunderstood child oh you fool something in her voice startled him yet he was far from gathering her meaning what is it he demanded entirely bewildered there was no light in her eyes now from luminous sapphires they had become pebbles dull orbs of lapis lazuli when she spoke her voice creaked and wheezed if your master lived to-day i would go to palestine she said looking very directly at him what on earth for he asked blankly can you not understand her look was that of medusa and flickering lights came and went in her half lifeless eyes their glare rather than the toneless notes of her voice made him faintly understand the chosen passage out of st matthew taken in conjunction with her earlier chatter of miracles and her late reference to palestine engendered in his brain a horrible a terrible an impossible thought and yet what are you talking about he asked harshly the cry of a soul on fire broke on his ears you brute when i suffer so does it need words does what need words she dashed her hand on the open page of the bible this this ow oh. he rose and sat down with cold hands and a white face 
the meaning of what she meant crashed like the blow of a bludgeon and his brain spun to the shock leah he heard himself say in a faraway voice like a telephone whisper then he stopped to stare at the quiet woman who sat upright with rigid features and tightly clasped hands leah he muttered again and some indefinable feeling made his hair crisp at the roots yes that was all she said and her lips hardly moved in the saying kames looked aimlessly round the room and noted the pattern of the window curtains only the whistling of the coals spouting smoke and jetting flame broke the stillness his eyes returned to her face fair and stainless impossible he jerked his voice entirely beyond control i'm then his nerves vibrated and his skin crept three doctors in london five doctors abroad assured me that it is not impossible unfortunately they were like two pale ghosts sitting in the shadows said one ghost to the other but have you are you uh his tongue refused to form either terrible word leah unexpectedly flung up her arms with a scream then brought two shaking hands across her mouth to stifle that wild note of human pain right and left up and down did she look as though to be certain that no one was within earshot but the vicar it will never do to let the servants hear said the rapid action lionel's benumbed brain could not yet take in wholly the appalling truth if truth it was the leper dropped her hands and looked at him heavily you lying devil said leah slowly what 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 babel came incoherently she groaned and rocked with hands palm to palm between her knee i will be thou clean i will be thou clean over and over again did she moan the words till they bored into the listener's brain god have mercy murmured the man trying to be a man the creeping paralysis of the horror almost struck him dumb but he managed by a violent effort to wet his lips with a stiff tongue and made it form certain words are you sure of this three doctors went on the duchess rocking and droning as demetrius did aforetime three doctors five doctors eight doctors in all they said the same thing oh such a beastly thing it was the truth though doctors never lie like parsons and that book with its falsehoods that she lunged forward without rising and grabbing the bible pitched it into the fire lionel snatched it from the flames leah struck it from his hands and then ensued a silent struggle uncanny savage in which some leaves were torn all at once she relaxed her grip and lay back crying quietly it's a shame a shame she wept softly just when everything was going on so well and it can't be cured all the money in the world can't cure me i must die in bits her voice soared shrilly and she crouched as though being beaten ah oh, that kiss that beastly kiss leah how did you get this disease the woman took no notice but sprang up as though moved by springs flinging wide her arms and looking upward in wild rebellion i won't die i won't i refuse to give in i refuse she tore up and down the room speaking in angry undertones as one always mindful of possible listeners i have always had my own way was her whispered argument always always why can't i have it now there can be nothing up there no no there can't be if he does exist he would not have let me go so long on my own i am strong i have never met any one stronger i must win i have always won i will win her voice rose tyrannically i am myself who can be stronger than myself and yet this thing a strong shudder shook her into weakness this vile vile oh oh i believe there must be something can you tell me you you who assume to know the secrets of the stars she lurched forward in a frenzy of deadly fear cannoned against lionel and dragged him down into his chair clasping his knees and knocking her forehead against them where is your master she whimpered tell him i'm sorry really i am sorry he may cure me then as he cured that man long ago gentle jesus the children call him so he can't be cruel to me to me he can't be cruel to any one so they say ah they say they say but how do i know it's not true it isn't true and yet if it was if it lionel she broke off with the squall of a terrified child hiding her eyes pitifully i'll be good i'll be good only only he will do this it's a little thing oh a very little thing and you said that he could that he your master i mean oh 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 
with sobbing breath she unwound her arms and fell back beating the carpet with open palms murmurings went rhythmically with the padding sound i want to be clean i want to be clean i want to be clean kames tried to lift her let me summon help with a bound she was on her feet pushing him back do that and i kill you she panted clenching her hands and facing him furiously no one knows but these doctors yes and katinka and that fiend demetrius strange also if i had strange here she hammered with closed fists on the vicar's shoulders i would cut him into bits i would blind him somehow i would i would oh what would i not do why couldn't he leave that infected beast to die in siberia oh the 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 she poured forth a torrent of words which made the listener grow hot and cold with shame then again she collapsed as the chill of a deadly fear struck at her heart i don't want to die i don't want to die and against the wall she rocked with arms held crosswise over her eyes swinging ever swinging the scene was like a nightmare but by this time lionel had the grip of his emotions leah he said firmly and advancing close to the writhing creature you must tell your husband you must out came her arms with a circular swing and struck him fair across the eyes jim doesn't know jim must never know he was almost blinded but persisted leah something must be done her voice sank in with it her rage something must be done said she faintly something shall be done and soon what do you mean he asked half under his breath and half catching at her intention she took no notice sit down please said leah quietly and kames obeyed since to summon assistance would only be to precipitate a still more dreadful scene the duchess looked into the mirror and arranged her hair also she dabbed her eyes with a handkerchief and smoothed her wrist cuffs when she did speak it was in the smooth voice of a society hostess asking a visitor if he took sugar in his tea i have made a fool of myself lionel but you must admit that i am rather severely tried just now oh you poor soul his tone and look were pitiful reserve your sympathy till you hear what i have to say but first tell me honestly can christ cure me yes if it is his will then let him you must have faith faith in what in his power and will to heal how can i believe when i do not believe he died for you on the cross he did not that was purely a political matter because the jews feared the romans i have read strauss i have read renan the four gospels also you can't puzzle me he was a good man a very good man quite a saint if you will but the son of god she shook her head with a hard frown of disbelief lionel was at his wit's end then you cannot be cured no she looked at him steadily an awful smile curving the corners of her mouth i thought you would fail me at the last but how can i you can't so there is no more to be said she sat down with a little sigh dear me how very hot this room is would you mind opening the window kames did not move leah go to bed and let me send for one of those doctors you consulted useless useless she waved him aside calmly they have spoken i know the worst i am prepared to face the worst are you hold your tongue she added peremptorily as he opened his mouth listen from beginning to end did she relate the whole fraud the sham death the stolen money the betrayal and the punishment of the kiss her voice was perfectly calm her posture easy and her self-control admirable the listener grew white and red became nervous and angry quivered with disgust recoiled with loathing as she unfolded the brutal tale of her sin and treachery leah spared him no detail however painful she even made herself out to be worse than she really was if that were possible from the buying of demetrius by that butterfly kiss in the picture gallery to the revenge of demetrius in that stuffy cabin when she struggled in the arms of one who had been what she now was she related the whole without a blush without a tremor in a quiet level voice unmoved and utterly shameless the horror of her position seemed to remove her from the region of human emotions and morals it was the unveiling of original evil lionel did not interrupt but closed his eyes with a sick feeling as she drew to the end i first noticed that something was wrong when my hands burned as i washed them i thought nothing of it at the time but the feeling became so painful that i saw my doctor he said well you can guess what he said i consulted another and another the same diagnosis i went abroad but the doctors in germany and france told me the same thing i knew it was true i felt it in my heart it was true oh she paused there is no cure none none then she finished with a nervous titter pleasant for me isn't it don't gasped the vicar leaning his head on his hand and much too qualmish to speak oh you needn't look like that i have to suffer not you 
i kept wondering how i got the beastly thing and although i fancied it might be that kiss i could not be quite sure katinka enlightened me she was always a good-natured girl after the death of that little reptile she returned to england and watched me seeing that i went to doctors she must have watched very closely and then abroad she wrote a letter such a nasty spiteful letter but i always thought katinka was a cat would you like to no no i have heard enough and you call yourself a man pooh you must hear i learned from the letter that demetrius contracted the the well what he suffered from amongst the natives of kamchatka he intended first to show me up but when that horrid girl told him how she had hurt my mouth he knew that by a kiss he could ah he was a doctor you see and the skin being broken it was easy for him knowing what he did to do what he wanted the brute that was why he kissed me so hard and stop stop it is beastly isn't it that's all i think she was examining her finger-nails when next lionel stole a glance at her he scarcely knew what to say her treachery and the result of her treachery were both abominable that a beautiful woman gently born and bred should sin so vilely seemed incredible for beautiful she was sitting there calmly under the uplifted sword of azrael the angel of death and vile she confessed herself to be yet he could hardly accept either the physical degradation or the moral turpitude you may be mistaken after all he stammered vaguely because i am not an object she replied with a shrug how like a child you are to require proof i don't intend to become an object i can tell you but if there is no cure there is another way of course it is disagreeable but what is one to do in such straits the vicar guessed her meaning and violently threw off the weakness with which her story had infected his manhood i forbid you to heap crime upon crime said he firmly and insistently i shall do what i like do not dictate to me if you please but god i don't believe in god you do you must does not this shameful punishment which has overtaken you in the hour of triumph declare the anger of a great and terrible god no her expression was mulish woman woman kneel and ask for mercy i won't ask for mercy when i'm being treated so badly never never just when things were going so smoothly too the money coming in by the bushel and demetrius out of the way i call it a shame it's mean spiteful cruel i intended to have such a jolly time and now now her voice faltered and broke she swung with a groan to one side of the chair hiding her face and breathing heavily that deadly fear of the inevitable would grip her do what she would leah came's voice shook a trifle god is very good to you her eyes stared at him bleakly very good we are put into this world not for the pampering of the flesh but that we may learn through trouble how to become more spiritual our souls are of god and to god they must return rising through much tribulation to his necessary perfection sorrows are sent for the flesh to bear not as punishments but as lessons to be learned of our vices says st augustine we can frame a ladder to ascend heavenward if we but tread them beneath our feet this you have never known and i do not know it now from your dreadful trouble will come the knowledge in this way alone can humility come god out of loving pity for your unbending pride which prevents the holy spirit from entering your heart has beaten you to your knees on your knees then ask for mercy for light for purification of your unclean soul god's staff which he gives to all in life's pilgrimage has changed into a rod he gave you all things and you used his gifts to glorify the flesh now in his infinite love has he sent trouble i have brought that upon myself for your amendment it was permitted that you should do so out of your pleasant vices have you made whips to lash yourself the wages of sin is death you have sinned and the wages oh leah leah bitterly cruel as it may seem to you i rejoice that the wages should be so paid you are a job's comforter i must say said the duchess sullenly because i can see how this tribulation of the flesh can save your soul alive god might have struck you dead in your wickedness and with justice for your wilful sin instead of doing so he has given you a lingering disease that you should be brought to acknowledge his power and also have time to repent there is nothing to repent of shame shame even from a worldly point of view you have sinned grossly how much blacker then are your deeds in god's sight but they can be made white the past can be wiped out by sincere sorrow leah twisted her hands above her head with a cry of impotent rage how can i repent when i do not even feel sorry you will not ask christ to help you repentance is a gift as is faith he will give both and his undying love if you will but confess your sin i have done so to you 
who am powerless confess it to christ weep as did mary at his wounded feet hard as is your heart he will melt it soiled as is your soul he will cleanse it now now when human aid is vain now is the appointed time repent and be saved if i try to will he will he cure me that question i cannot dare not answer his mercy is infinite you say that to me knowing what i suffer i say it to you who suffer in no other way could the spirit have brought you to the mercy seat he has not brought me now she persisted obstinately lionel fell on his knees and caught her restless hands oh you poor sinful soul for which christ died he cried passionately to whom can you go but to god doctors cannot cure you he can if it be his will he may even make your flesh clean ah and that question you declined to answer a minute or two back besides you denied that miracles could take place i did not no one ever came in vain to our blessed lord when he walked the earth some two thousand years ago as was his power then so it is now he loved in those days he loves now sitting on god's right hand he is ready to succour the vilest his arm is not shortened his pity is not exhausted in mercy he may even cure you of this dreadful disease as he cured the afflicted man we read of only acknowledge that god is mightier than you are only bow to the rod only admit your sin only cry for pardon if he will cure me she began wavering that you must leave to his love and wisdom cure you he may permit you to suffer he may see fit but save your soul he can that much i can swear to i want this horrible thing cured she cried passionately to continue in your sins to soil your soul anew no no if i repent repentance includes submission god may not see fit to cure you it may be your punishment and i think it is to bear this woeful cross which if rightly borne may lead you to the light of lights the flesh the flesh you but think of the flesh of the passing world of the vanities of life of the enjoyment of the senses from these things god would lead you away to contemplate spiritual realities and the appointed path has been made known bear your cross oh my dear bear your cross and endure to the end that you may be saved terrible as it may seem this evil whence good will arise has removed you from temptation if you live secluded dying piecemeal she cried in a frenzy of anger and wrenched away her hands no no i will not live i will die die at least i can do that as did judas leah if you cannot bear your punishment in the flesh how will you endure it in the spirit live for christ and what matters the world everything everything i know what i am i do not know what i may be here in this tangible world we are safe safe from god can you say that when his hand has struck you down i tell you poor sinner that thus does he show his mercy as is your crime so must be your punishment but christ can pardon your iniquities and christ will if you only plead for mercy and for grace leah rose crimson with rage you'll drive me mad i don't want your spiritual life your next world of shadows and moonshine give me life 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 the cry of the flesh was so insistent so futile so blind in its desire that lionel shuddered still on his knees he began a fervent prayer the miserable woman walked rebelliously up and down the room fighting against the conviction now slowly being driven home to her understanding that he whom she had mocked and defied was indeed the most high god but she still fought against a submission she knew well would have to be made begged for mercy she would not her heart could not feel her intelligence could not grasp but somehow she knew a dreadful thing had reduced her to impotence and the ego could not battle against the something it had hitherto flouted but now furiously admitted might exist there remained but one thing to do but one dark way to take do it and take it she would but lionel more than suspected her intention lionel would thwart her and she would be compelled to live live on an object of disgust and pity no no was her inward cry as the imploring voice of the vicar rose and fell and died away in a last tremulous amen for the last time therefore did she set her wits to plot for the ego lionel said she hesitatingly will you send for jim the vicar's face lighted up he saw in this request what she meant him to see a sign of yielding you will let me tell him leah nodded there is a doctor in vienna she whispered inventing recklessly with the cunning of one driven to bay he has found out a cure i hear if jim will take me over i'll telegraph to hengist castle at once said kames making for the door impetuously and come back to dinner said she following i can't pass the evening alone i shall come but you won't frighten me any more with this religious talk lionel pressed her hand sadly i've done what i could leah only the holy spirit can bring home conviction to your heart try and pray yes assented the duchess submissively it is all that is left then the better part which cannot be taken away is left 
he went away quite deceived since she had suggested the viennese physician so calmly he thought that she still hoped desperately and for all he knew the hope might be fulfilled seeing the present-day resources of science certainly he never dreamed how she had hoodwinked him and so sped on his errand of mercy leaving behind him a woman too broken to exult in the success of her final piece of trickery it was all over man could do nothing god would do nothing as demetrius had been smitten for the crime she had induced him to commit so was she being punished for the evil she had called into being lionel had talked nonsense of course but he left behind him a feeling in her mind that the god he worshipped did exist how the belief had come into her heart she could not say but it was certainly there try as she might with all the strength of her brilliant intellect she knew that never again could she be an atheist god existed to her comprehension at last but the newly conceived deity was not the father of love and light rather did he appear an omnipotent tyrant who had driven her to bad courses by giving her tastes she was unable to satisfy and who now punished her for acting as the nature he had given her dictated she was like a mouse in the claws of a cat and could no more escape than could the tormented little beast only to the height of acknowledging that something much stronger than herself existed could she rise and her submission was as that of caliban to prospero wrenched violently from the egotistic wrappings of her soul she the true self the immortal spirit stood naked and shamed yet defiant she submitted because only submission was left but all her flesh shouted furiously against its victor then again as the tormented soul strove to overcome the lower material self did she recall lionel's words god was love he declared and in love had god broken her shield of self snapped her sword of desire certainly now that this world could do nothing for her she would be forced to seek the other there she might learn how to rise from darkness into light that the spiritual existed she was now reluctantly convinced that a study of its meaning would bring her peace she could not be certain of course it was early days yet she had gained a great step by the admission that god reigned even though he had proved it to her so cruelly it might be that by endless striving she would learn something of his love before death ended her intolerable sufferings god ordered her to fly was it worth while to trust to him for wings the struggle of the soul wavering between hell and heaven might have ended in the victory of the latter and leah might have consented with bitter tears to bear the cross laid upon her shrinking shoulders but while wearily pacing the room a chance glance showed her in the mirror that beauty of which she had been and was so proud leaning her arms on the mantelpiece she examined every detail lovingly and long could she bear to see that gradually disappear could she accept life as a thing and not as a being those blue eyes would grow dull and animal that glorious hair would drop off that complexion of cream and roses would would oh oh no 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 the rebellious cry of the flesh ascended to the stars it must never be never all that she knew herself to be revolted against the slow wasting agony that would most surely come to reduce that splendour of her beautiful body to the dust dishonoured and shamed to save herself from such infamy it but needed an overdose of chloral then in the pride of her loveliness she would pass away painlessly without disfigurement triumphant in a minor degree at least with all the indomitable strength of a will that had been only thwarted by him who had created that will did she resolve to snatch this one poor laurel leaf from the almighty victor turning from the mirror she felt that her mind was steeled that self was not entirely defeated after all her unconquerable will would win to-night she whispered to her shivering soul when i go to bed an overdose of chloral and then when i awaken she stopped with the chills of death at her heart oh was her despairing admission you are the stronger it was the cry of the flesh making sullen submission in vain did the soul piteously beg that its tabernacle might yet hold it a little while for the purging of its sin the flesh would not hear beaten conquered shamed tormented its petty triumph could yet be obtained in this hour of defeat and the terrified soul sobbing unheeded waited for the rapidly approaching hour which would send it forth disembodied whither end of chapter thirty four chapter thirty five of lady jim of curzon street this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org lady jim of curzon street by fergus hume chapter thirty five we regret to announce to our readers the unexpected demise of the duchess of pentland 
at firmingham essex according to the rev lionel kames who dined with her grace on the evening of her death she was in the very best of health and spirits the unfortunate lady retired at a comparatively early hour and was found dead in the morning by her maid a brief examination proved that death was due to an overdose of chloral which her grace was in the habit of taking when suffering from sleeplessness the duke of pentland who was expected at firmingham arrived shortly after the painful discovery to be greeted by the disastrous intelligence the loss of this highly popular lady will be greatly felt in high circles her beauty and wit were exceptional and only to be surpassed by her truly kind heart it may be well said that she lived to make others happy to the unfortunate her purse was always open and to the afflicted her soothing presence was a welcome relief again and again did she sacrifice herself in the cause of charity and in many ways unknown to the public did she do good by stealth her graceful presence will be much missed at various great functions during the coming winter season but it is the poor and needy who will most keenly feel the loss of one whose large heart was ever ready to aid them in trouble much commiseration is expressed for the duke of pentland who was most tenderly attached to his beautiful consort a brilliant star has disappeared from the social firmament but what is more lamentable a noble religious charitable lady has gone leaving a place which can never be filled the funeral which will take place at firmingham next tuesday will doubtless be largely attended by those who loved her and knew her worth the world can ill spare such a one who illustrated in her conduct and qualities the highest attributes of womanhood she was a great lady a true tender woman a sincere friend and a model wife what words could better befit her untimely grave than that eulogy on dorcas set forth in the acts this woman was full of good works and alms deeds which she did Fini. End of chapter thirty five end of lady jim of curzon street by fergus hume